What's going on guys? Matthew Monas here, back to schools in a couple of weeks and a lot of you kids out there are tight on money. You need something that's gonna be affordable but get your work done. That's where the Surface Go comes into play. Is this a device capable enough to help you with your schoolwork? So what are we gonna do is do a quick overview and I'm gonna answer all of your questions to find out if this is the perfect laptop for school. This is a very small device, and that's one of the most attractive features about the Surface Go. It's something that's light enough, under two pounds, you can chuck it in your bag, you won't feel it while you're carrying. But all of you wanna know whether or not it has the power to do your work. To give you guys some scale, I got a Samsung Galaxy Note 9 here, a 6.4 inch device. I got a Google Pixel 2 here, a five inch device, and this will give you guys kind of an idea how this device scales. If that's not good enough for you, I got an avocado. Ports are very simple. You have a micro SD card slot for external storage, a Surface Connect port to power the device, an audio in jack, and USB type C. Now this port is not Thunderbolt 3, so if you're expecting to hook this up to an external GPU, your dreams have been crushed. Plus, if you're using a dongle, it's gonna hang off the right side of the tablet. Now it doesn't look too nice, but this is not a big deal. When you're in classroom, you have everything you need right here. You're basically changing more ports for portability. The display is probably the most impressive thing about this device. This is a 10 inch display, but has a three by two aspect ratio, 1800 by 1200. So a lot of pixels per inch. What really amazes me that three by two aspect ratio gives you more screen real estate than a 14 inch laptop with a 16 by nine aspect ratio if you're doing productivity. Now it's not the best for watching movies and if movies is your main goal, then you're better off with a regular tablet, but man, for 550 bucks, this screen is more color accurate than $1,500 or $1,600 laptops. Peak brightness, 405 nits, which is insane for a tablet at this price point. Great display, Matt, but how's that webcam? You're in school, you have a long distance relationship with your significant other. They wanna know how you look late at night after a long studying session. Well, this camera is 1080p, looks great, sounds great, beating out $3,000 computers pretty impressive if you ask me. So let's quickly wrap this up. Sound, two speakers on the front, they face you, they sound good, they just don't get really, really loud. Battery life, probably the worst thing about this laptop, you're getting only about five hours of use before needing to charge, and performance. That's where I'm gonna change this to the question portion of this video. First question comes from Shirzad N. I would like to see how well it behave in reading books, taking notes, does it lag, is it snappy, and how is the experience using it without keyboard, as tablet with some Windows 10 scaling? Run some drawing applications like Photoshop or Illustrator. Is that all you want me to check? Do you want me to see if it uh, cooks you breakfast too there, Shirzad? But I'll do it anyways. Right now I got about eight tabs open. I also have Photoshop open, I have Discord open, and we're gonna test out some drawing. So right now, I'm in Discord, everything's nice and smooth. I hope everyone is having a nice, having a nice day. Then I'm gonna jump over to Chrome, into a document, I'm gonna start typing. Let's say below here, hi, this is a project about milk. Works fine, no lag so far. I can bounce between different uh, websites. Everything is still loaded in memory, this is Twitter. It's a little laggy on Twitter, but that's only because I have a ton of stuff open, but it is usable. But once it catches up, it goes back to being nice and smooth. I can also play music at the same time, but the big question, how is it in Photoshop? Well, I have a 50 megabyte PSD file loaded up here. I can pinch and zoom. It's pretty smooth for a device that only has eight gigabytes of RAM. I can take my Surface Pen, I can draw myself a little face. Drawing seems to be pretty smooth, latency seems to be pretty low. Overall, I'm pretty impressed. So next question comes from Douglas Belknap 56 Hey, hey, I'm wondering if it's worth trading in my Surface Pro 4. I want something smaller, but don't want to give up performance. Well look, the Surface Pro is much more powerful than this device. I'm not sure exactly what you're doing, but you are gonna be giving up performance for portability. So if you're happy with the way your Surface Pro is running, I recommend keeping it instead of downgrading to a Surface Go. Next question comes from Skull Drone at One. Hey Matt, I was gonna buy this to replace my aging Tab S2. I have two questions. Does it stutter a lot? What's the average battery life and standby time? So look, 
if you have tons of things open, there'll be slight lag here and there. You have to be realistic with your expectations when using this device. This will help with productivity. So basic stuff like documents, you can do some like Photoshop work, you can play certain types of games. But if you're expecting this thing to do 3D studio, if you're expecting to do 4K video editing, it's just not gonna happen. Average battery life, you're looking at about five hours of use before needing to charge. And because of its size, it charges up pretty quickly. Next question comes from Tech Leather Craft 10. Adobe Suite Lightroom Photoshop Premiere. So I already showed Photoshop. Lightroom is very similar. It runs fine if you have to do a quick edit in a pinch, but I wouldn't use this device as my main device for Photoshop. But can it run Premiere? Well, that's a great question. I just loaded up a 4K file. It has a lot of layers. You can do things like quickly jump into it, make a quick change, save it as a project file, but just don't expect to actually edit your footage or render it out. It just won't be able to do it. Like if I push play on this right now, look how long it's just gonna stutter. Like it's just very, very slow, but pretty impressive for a device this size. Next question comes from Amir Gori Ford. Matthew, sir, can the Surface Go run the AutoCAD software smoothly? The short answer is it depends. I can install it, I can load it. If you're doing 2D work, it's absolutely fine. As soon as you start doing things with Metal Ray, if you start doing any sort of 3D animation, it will not be able to do it. You need an external GPU for it. But if 2D work is the only thing you need to do, the Surface Go can handle it just fine. Next question comes from NC on my Discord server. What about gaming? Look, this is not a gaming laptop, but I was playing CSGO. I was getting pretty decent frame rates around 30 FPS to 40 FPS, but then the laptop itself started to overheat in the back and shut down. It's kind of strange though, because I actually did a CPU test with a program that utilizes the CPU to, to basically boost temperatures and it ran fine. But as soon as I started gaming, it got too hot and the laptop had to cool itself. Now I totally expect this. This is a fanless design. So it's just not meant to run intensive applications for a very long period of time. And since it's fanless, there's no noise, which is another benefit compared to bigger, bulkier laptops. Last question comes from Connor King. Can it run Crisis? So here's the bottom line. The Surface Go is a great device. It's portable, it's small. It doesn't do the hardcore stuff, but it does the stuff that you need it to do really well. You can jump in and out of more intensive applications like Adobe Premiere, but just don't expect to utilize this as your gaming machine. I think for the price, it's one of the best options on the market right now. And if you're going back to school, I think you should take a look at it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, feel free to hit the like button. If you have any questions, hit me up on Discord. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.